Come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be reviewing and providing a bit of a how to play for Dinner in Paris from Funny Fox and Hachette Games. So should you embark on a journey to build a Parisian culinary empire or should you make your gaming reservations elsewhere and give Dinner in Paris a wide berth? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Taped Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be reviewing Dinner in Paris in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you like this video, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, but I'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. So I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. I'm going to be diving on into dinner in Paris. It is from Funny Fox, which I believe is a, a brand new uh, game company out of France. And it's also being released here in North America by Hachette Games. The game is designed by The Trolls, whoever they may be, with artwork provided by Elaine Boyer. Uh, Dinner in Paris is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, plays in around 40 minutes, and does carry an MSRP of $39.99. The fine folks over at Hachette Games were kind enough to provide me with this review copy but I do want to point out, neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share my thoughts about this game with you. It's important for you to know that. All right, let's swing on over to the other camera because I've got dinner in Paris sort of set up. So the premise of the game is that the city of Paris has opened up a new square and it is open for public consumption, you know, for new businesses and things like that. So, of course, it's going to be a bunch of restaurants that are going to open up in this square. And each of the players is going to represent someone who is trying to build their own little culinary empire right here in the midst of this square. So I'm going to kind of tour around. I'm going to show you some of the components. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can get a better look at everything. So essentially, this is the game board here. So this is the square that you're going to be building the restaurants. The restaurants are right over here. And they vary in size from two spaces to five spaces in uh, length. So to kind of give you an idea, you would place restaurants like that. Depending on the number of players, you might, if they're only playing two, you might actually build it in there. So those are the restaurants there. We also have some various different cards that are available to us on the board. So we have our ingredient cards, which is a set collecting aspect of the game that we need to take part in in order for us to build the restaurants. We also have uh, a special majority deck of cards. We're only going to use one of these in the game. So we're going to choose one of these. And then at the end of the game, we're going to assign victory points based upon the majority. So for an example, this card's pointing out the most terraces around street lights. Street light there, street light there. Most terraces in Ruest area, which we have these broken down into four sections. So Ruest is here. So it'd be in this section here. And then we have most restaurants. And that would be what we're looking at. So the rest of these cards would be discarded once we've selected one of the majority cards and placed it here on the board for everyone to see. 
we also have these objective cards. So we've got four objective cards over here, and these are community objectives, so or common objectives. Any player can attempt to complete these objectives for victory points. We've got more objective cards over here. And these objectives could be different things. It could be you're looking to lay down terraces, which I'll explain what that is in a moment. But if you're able to lay down this pattern, then you would be able to score five victory points. And this is actually, you score this during the game. This is not something that you would be waiting to uh, reveal at the end of the game because you can complete more than one objective. So we've got those cards there. We also have pigeon cards. So you'll notice across the board, and when I zoom in, you'll get a better look. We have these different pigeons. And if you cover up a pigeon with a terrace, which that's a terrace piece right there. I happen to be playing the red player. <laughs> you'll actually draw one of these pigeon cards. Now, some of these could be used right now. So if they have like a lightning bolt, it's something that you're gonna use immediately when you draw the card. If it's got the little um, sand timer, the hourglass, then it's something that you can save for a later turn. So that is the other deck of cards that we've got. Now, what's going to happen is each of the players are going to have a board. And these boards are actually really nice. They're nice, thick stock. They're actually cut. So they have they're recessed. There's a recessed area here as well as across here. And you'll see we've got all the various different terrace pieces as well. I mean, we'll zoom in. You'll get a better look in just a moment. So you're going to set up. Everybody's going to have their own board like so with their little money and all the different terrace pieces here. They're also going to receive two objective cards and they're gonna choose one. So that would be a, a secret objective that the player has. And then you're also going to receive four ingredient cards to start off with. So each turn, the players are always going to draw an ingredient card. So they can choose any of the ingredient cards that are already out, which are these four here. This is a discard pile. I just wanted to show you what the discard pile looks like. You can either choose any of the four that are already out on the board or choose from one from the deck. Now I'll show you the rules real quick because the rules are very nicely presented, super easy to understand, and they're not super long. We've got plenty of images and examples for you as well just like so so all in all we've got eight pages of rules and what's going to what's going to take place is you're going to continue alternating your your turns until one of three things are going to take place you're either going to have placed all of the terraces from two categories of restaurants there are four categories here or there are no more restaurants that can be placed on the board, which is determined by the number of players. So there are fewer restaurants that would be being placed out on the board in a two player game than there would three or four players. Uh, the other way that the game will end is there's nowhere left to put terraces on the board. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can get a better look and I'll show you what the board looks like. There we go. I'll show you what the player board looks like here. So we've got these two rows here, and that is the amount of money that we have on each turn. So each turn, you're going to have some options of what you can do. You, can, you must always draw an ingredient card, one of these smaller cards here, or they're, they're actually called resource cards. We kept calling them ingredient cards to kind of give you an idea. So you're always, well, <laughs> money on all of those. So you're always gonna draw one of these cards. As I mentioned before, either you're gonna draw from the deck or you're gonna draw from the four available cards that are sitting out there. 
You can open a restaurant. So if you have the required ingredients, let's see what we've got here. Well, we don't have anything that we can open anything yet with this. But as an example, let's say, let's grab, I'm just going to go through here real quick. Here we go. Let's say I had these two. I had those two resource cards available to me. Well, if we take a look at this board, we're going to see that the little two-space restaurant requires two potatoes, two potato resource cards in order to open it up. So it's going to show us, first of all, how many of these restaurants exist in the game? So we've got five it's going to be worth two victory points for this restaurant at the end of the game. It does not generate any, re, uh, any cash for us each turn. So this is a pretty little restaurant, but it's a very easy restaurant to build, and it's very cheap to build terrace spots for it as well. So if we look down here, we've got these three spot restaurants. So we actually have three different kinds. We've got the cutlery, the fruit de mer, and a pizzeria. So we've got these different restaurants here. And of course, it's going to show us these are the ingredients that we need, the resources we need in order to open up one of those restaurants. We've got the grill, We've got the wine bar is essentially what that is there. And then we've got the brassiere. I, I, I'm i terrible at French, so <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay, whatever, Jeff. In fact, the funny thing is it's almost like I want to sit here and do this review in a, a very bad Gaston um, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast voice. No, so then you are going to build restaurants. In the square. <laughs> yeah, I won't be doing that. <laughs> so, so, and then we've got, there's two of these, only one of these. So the bigger, more valuable restaurants are harder to build. They're more expensive to build terraces for. But they provide money. And they also provide you with a lot of victory points at the end of the game. So as an example, let's say, let's say we're playing just two players. And you'll notice we've got these lines on the board that will show two, three, and four players. So if we're playing two players, we're actually looking at building on this line here. And then we can't build terraces behind our restaurant. So, yeah, you know, let's, let's pretend we got four players. So I'm going to say, say I've got my two potatoes. So one of the actions I can take is building a restaurant. So I would cash these in. So I'm going to discard these. I would place the restaurant. So that would be one of my actions. Now, remember, you always draw a resource card. So you can open a restaurant. You can build a terrace. Now, building a terrace, there are rules to this. So first of all, it's going to cost us for each of these spaces. So if we look up here, just below the restaurant itself, we see there's a little one with a minus sign. So what that means is it costs us one cash to build a terrace until we get to this point here. Then it's gonna cost us two. Then anything up here is three or more. And then of course, when we take a look at the various other restaurants, their terraces are more expensive. But the bigger, fancier restaurants are also more expensive to build and to build terraces for. So let's say we're gonna spend our one that we've got, remember we got one, we always have one every turn, and we're going to spend that. We're going to build a terrace. So the terrace, you always must build a terrace in front of 
your restaurant. You may not build diagonally. That does, that does not count. So you have to build right there. Now, as you uncover these terrace pieces, as you, as you lay them out, as you build the terraces for your restaurants, you're going to unlock various different aspects. So at the end of the game, that is one victory point. So we'd score a victory point because of that. Let's say we can, we continue building this for a while. We, we're going along. Say something like that. Well, once I uncover this, we see that we've got the little coin with an addition sign. So that means that increased the amount of money I get every turn. So I would actually move this up to there. So as you're unlocking things, you're going to actually unlock more cash. And of course, as you have restaurants, you're going to add to that as well. So one of the aspects about this game that I actually like is that there's a cutthroat aspect to it because your opponents are also opening restaurants and they're laying down terraces. You cannot lay down a terrace next to a terrace of your opponent. So as an example, you can do it diagonally. So let's pretend we've got another restaurant out here and we've got our orange player. So that would be legal. They could have a terrace like that. They cannot have a terrace like this or like this or like that because it's it's right it's uh right on top of well it's not on top but it's right next to ours but you can do it it's just like so so diagonally is okay but there are some aspects where there are some pigeon cards that will allow you to build over other people's terraces and basically steal their terraces away uh so there there's a cutthroat aspect to the game because you're trying to block people off from building terraces. So I thought that's pretty cool as well in the game. So that's pretty nice. One thing I thought is also kind of cool is that to show who owns a restaurant, we actually have these little counters that we drop on top of the restaurants. So in the restaurants are are plastic. You have these little plastic roof pieces. So we'll give you a little better look at some of the, the styles of the restaurants. Just like so. So those are the different kinds of restaurants that we've got as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to continue on. As I mentioned, you're going to be taking your turns. You can Build the terrace. The other action that you can take, let's put a restaurant back there. The other action you can take is to complete a personal or common objective. So these cards that are over here, these are those common objectives. So if, for an example, let's say, just for the sake of argument here, that I was able to put together See now if I covered that up I would actually end up being drawing a pigeon card So as an example let's say I was able to to build this So as one of my actions remember I only have two but as one of my actions I can complete the objective so I would actually take this card from the community from these common objectives, and I would place this in front of me, knowing that I am going to get five victory points at the end of the game. Now, remember, I pointed out, we also have these personal objectives. This was the card that I had here. So it says nine terraces in Rue Est area, which right now, at this point, I would have six. So I would only need three more terraces to lay out in order to complete this. If I complete this, I can show the other players, use an action to complete that, and I can also draw another objective. Now, I can decide 
I can keep this objective or I can just discard it. And the reason is because each of the objectives, if you don't complete it, it's going to cost you victory points at the end of the game. So as an example, this is my personal objective. If I was unable to, to place nine terraces, to build nine terraces in Ruest, then I would lose three victory points at the end of the game. So essentially, once again, you've got drawing a resource card. You always draw a resource card no matter what during your turn. Then you're going to take two actions. You can draw a resource card. So in, a, in essence, you can actually do that three times in your turn. You can actually draw three resource cards in your turn. You can open a restaurant. You can open two restaurants in a turn. So that is a possibility. You can, you can build more than one restaurant in your turn. You can build terraces. You can only build once. You can only build terraces once. That is, some, that is the one thing that you cannot duplicate during your turn. And then, of course, you can complete your objectives. Once you hit the end game point of either having cleared out two Terra sections, two of your four on your board, or if you have no more restaurants that you can place in the game, depending on the number of players, or if there's nowhere else for you to build terraces, which I got to be honest, I haven't seen that happen. I guess it could. I'm sure it could happen, but that is not something that I had run across playing this for review. So once that's done, you're going to count up your victory points and you get victory points for restaurants. You get victory points for your terraces. You get victory points for the majorities down here. Your majorities. Remember, we've got that majority card that we took. So we would have whoever's got the most terraces around streetlights. And it's by it's not going to be just one player scores points. So if you're playing a four-player game, whoever came in first would get 12 points. Second gets eight. Third gets four. Fourth place gets nothing. And that would be for these three different majorities as well. Then you're going to get victory points for your completed objectives, both common and personal. You're going to tally that up, and whoever's got the most is the winner. In case of a tie, whoever built the most terraces is going to be the victor and be the new Parisian culinary king or queen. And that, in essence, is how you play dinner in Paris. Let me swing on over to the other camera because I will share my final thoughts as well as a review score. I gotta say, I really enjoyed dinner in Paris and so did the rest of the gang. Really, really did like it. I like the fact that there's a little gotcha to it. It's got a little bite to it. So you are laying down your terraces and you're looking at, okay, so how do I possibly complete some of these objectives, cover up some of these pigeons, but also block my opponents from putting together their terraces. Pretty, It's pretty fun. I do like that aspect. Some players may not like that. Some players might not like It's not overly take that by any stretch of the imagination. But you're not just all holding hands around the table singing kumbaya either. So I actually really definitely like that. I like the fact that you you kind of balance what you're trying to do. So you can crank out little restaurants and cheap terraces, but you're not going to score tons of victory points for it, and you're not going to be drawing in a lot of money every turn as well. You can try to hold out and build the bigger restaurants that provide more cash, more victory points, but they are tougher to build. And problem is, you know, the, the bigger restaurants, there's only three. There's two of one type, one of the other type. 
So if you're kind of socking things away to try to build one of those and the other players get to them first, you're out of luck. So I like that little balancing act too. You got to kind of juggle things as well with that. There's a lot going on in this game. It doesn't look like much. I mean, you know, I mean, the game actual, the physical presence, it does have some really nice table presence. But as far as looking at the game mechanics and that, you're like, yeah, okay. But once you play it a few times, you'll find out there's some interesting decisions that have to be made when you're playing the game. The component quality for everything is really nice, except for one aspect. And that is the cards. So the card stock is okay, but... These are the type of cards that'll get chipped up real easily. And in fact, when I was actually taking the cards apart, there some of them were actually sticking together. And I was very, very careful when I was separating them uh, because you'll see a lot of times the ink will pull off of these cards. It didn't completely pull off some of the cards, but it did come off a little bit. So these are also rounded making them a little wonkier, I guess we'll say, to sleeve. I would definitely say sleeve these cards. Uh, same thing with the small resource, or as we kept calling them, ingredient cards. These are these are the same card stock. Had to separate these two. It was like every two were stuck together, so you had to kind of separate quite a lot of these. These will get beat up really quick. Now, the restaurants themselves... They're kind of cool. I thought this is kind of cool. We've got these little stickers you got to put on. And there was an extra um, sticker sheet, which is very good because I ran into a couple of stickers that were not cut properly and they tore. And I would have been kind of bummed if I had like stickers on both sides of the restaurants, except for a couple where the stickers had torn. That'd be a pretty big bummer, but there is an extra sticker sheet. There are also extra terrace counters, which I thought that was very nice as well, because remember, you're going to start off by completely covering your board with the terrace pieces. So if you lose one or two and you didn't have extras, that would totally suck. But that is something that Funny Fox has planned ahead for. So definitely think the, the restaurants are kind of cool, but I got to be honest, I probably would have preferred better card stock, maybe a linen finish on the cards. And if Funny Fox had decided that they were just going to do, you know, punch board, thick counter restaurants with different artwork and stuff like that, that had been fine. I would have been completely fine with that. Um, but like I said, the, the with the restaurants on the board, once you're building stuff, you know, laying terraces out, it's got a nice table presence. It looks pretty cool. Anyway, gameplay wise, like I said, I really do like dinner in Paris. I was very pleasantly surprised how much I liked it. <laughs> so not that I thought it wasn't going to be any good, but I was like, wow, even the, even after, you know, first few turns playing it, I was like, "Ha, huh, yeah, all right. Okay, I'm digging this. So, and so did the gang. So, actually, um, I guess the only thing I can ding it is just the cards, just the card stock. And it's not terrible. I mean, you, you can sleeve them, but still. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give Dinner in Paris... A very nice recommendation. I think it was a lot of fun. I scored an 8.5 out of 10. It's that good. Once again, Dinner in Paris is from Funny Fox. It is being distributed uh, here in the U.S. or released here in North America by Hachette Games. It's for two to four players, ages 10 and up. Plays in around 40 minutes. And it does carry an MSRP of $39.99. Check it out. All right, that's it for this time out. Once again, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. 
Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. Because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review. It'll also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. So I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Thank you very much for watching. And as I wrap up all my videos during this never-ending pandemic, I certainly hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.